Hello everyone, I am Ani, a member of Cam Squared, a VIP team at Purdue. This video goes over basic Unix commands that you need to know in order to develop software. Knowing these commands are important because they let you interact with content on systems that may not have proper GUI or graphical user interface support installed. GUIs are often unnecessary on servers because people can access the data directly through other means, such as through commands. Once you get familiar with Unix commands, you'll find them to be a very convenient way in order to test and deploy software. Let's start by running a few basic Linux commands. First, let's open up the terminal. This is how you are able to run Unix commands on your computer. First off, let's show the current working directory. You do this by typing the pwd command. That stands for print working directory. And that prints out the folder that the terminal is currently working in. And you can see it starts out in the home directory, which is indicated by this tilde. Now, let's show the contents of the folder by using the ls command. That stands for list. And this command comes with many options that you can choose from to show more detailed specifics. For example, we can type in ls-l to show a long list of more complicated attributes, such as permissions, file size, user, etc. We can then create folders by using the mkdir command. That stands for make directory. So we'll just make a directory. And we can change directories by typing in cd. That stands for change directory. And you can use a tab in order to complete the rest of a parameter to a command. That just completes the rest of the command if it's able to find a file or folder that matches that name. So now we have navigated into this folder, which you can see is empty. So we can copy files by using the cp command from somewhere else. For example, we can copy this test file that I've created by either using the tilde to represent the home directory, or you can use dot dot in order to represent one folder up from the current working directory. So we'll go ahead and copy the file to the current working directory, which is represented by a dot. So now, if you list the contents of the working directory, you can see that our file is right there. We can use Unix-based text editors in order to view the files directly in the terminal, or if you have a graphics command, you can also use that in order to open the file. So now, now that we have this file, we can try running the program. Well, you run the program by typing a dot slash followed by the name of the program. But sometimes if you do this, you end up with permission errors. Now the reason is if you look at the permissions, we only have read and write access. That is what the R stands for in the W here. So there's a special permission to run something called execute. So we need to change the permissions by typing in chmod. This changes the permissions for a specific file. And we want to change it on the user, and we want to add execute. So now, if we print the permissions, we can see that I am able to execute the file. You can use the up key to navigate through your history in order to run the command again, and we have run our program. How nice. We're able to navigate through this directory structure in inside of the terminal directly. There are more commands such as mv for move or rename, 
and rm for remove. We can search for usages of other commands online. Now that you have a basic idea of how to use these commands, understanding other commands is just as simple. Now you may be wondering why you need to use these commands. Some programs, such as test.py that I showed you earlier, can only be run and show output within the terminal. In addition, commands allow you to interface with your computer and other computers on a lower level granularity than GUI applications. I've demonstrated interfacing with your computer, but how about other computers? The SSH command is a powerful tool that allows you to log into remote computers and remotely run commands on them. SSH only has one required parameter. That parameter is the username, followed by an at sign, followed by the host name. The host name can be a full domain name, like you would type into a address bar, or it could be an IP address. And the username is the username on that remote computer, as opposed to your local computer. When you log in for the first time, it will ask if the website is actually authentic. It likely is. And it will ask you for your password on that remote computer. And once you log in, you're able to run Unix commands like you would on your local computer, but directly onto that remote computer and see the files that are on that computer and interact with them. A related command to SSH is SCP. That's like CP for SSH. It lets you copy files from your remote computer onto your local computer or the other way around. Let's try copying from the remote computer onto the local computer. Ask for a password again and it has downloaded that remote file onto my local computer. The SSH command has documentation on SSH website that you can access. And one interesting feature that it provides is authentication using an authorized key as opposed to a password. And we can follow the tutorial on the website. And you can follow the tutorial for any other feature that's shown on the website as well. But this one is pretty useful. You can just provide no passphrase in order to log in to the remote computer without a passcode. So the first command that I ran here, that SSH key gen, according to the tutorial, creates a private key and SSH copy ID copies that key that was generated onto the remote computer. And this will be the last time that you need to type in your password in order to log into the remote computer from your local computer because it will remember that key that you just set up and will connect to that remote computer using the key as opposed to your password. There are many similar tutorials that you can follow on the website in order to do more complicated things with SSH. One last interesting feature that is not explicitly mentioned in the SSH website is using graphical user interface programs directly through SSH. This even works if the remote computer is not running a desktop. And you do this by passing in the dash X option to SSH. Otherwise, you use the command like normal. 
it takes a little bit more time in order to load and the actual graphical programs that you run through SSH also might take a bit more time to load than they would on a normal computer. And this should be expected because SSH should probably not be your primary choice in loading graphical user interfaces across a network. You should probably use TeamViewer or a similar application, but in cases where that is not feasible, this can be useful to look at photos on a giant image data set in a computer that is not fully capable of running an entire fully fledged desktop. To recap, we can use commands such as ls, cd, pwd in order to navigate through folders. We can use chmod in order to change permissions of files. We can use ssh to connect with remote servers and execute code. Thank you for watching and I hope that this video will help you develop high quality software and achieve your goals.